Greetings to you. My name is Manu Rajut, and today uh, we'll be going through some uh, visual basic uh, practicals on how to create a, a username and a password, a simple login system. And also we'll be looking at um, how to create a simple savings account app where uh, we take into consideration uh, VAT uh, and number of months and uh, interest and we try to calculate our final balance, then we do other aspects, then we end. Okay, so we'll be using this question as our guide. Now in the question, uh, we are supposed to create a simple login system. Now the login system, every login system uses the end boolean gates, okay? Whereby uh, two conditions have to be satisfied before the login, uh, before you'll be able to log in into a system. So if first you enter a wrong username and want enter a wrong password, you won't get any access. If you enter a wrong username, a correct access, a correct password, you won't get no, you won't get access. If you enter a correct username, a wrong password, you still won't get access. You only get access if you enter a correct username and a correct password. So that is the end Boolean gates. Okay. So we are going to use this logic. We are going to use this logic to create a simple uh, login system using Visual Basics. Now this will be the syntax uh, we'll be using to create the login sy system. And anywhere you see username, just use your own username you want to use and use your own password you want to use. Now in the question, your instructor said you should use your UJ email username as your username and have a strong password as your password. So when we get there, you do that. Okay. So after that, we need to, when we create the first form, we need to have two buttons. That is the clear button and the close button. Then we need to make sure that we change the use uh, system password character. We should change it from false to true. So that when somebody is entering, uh, when somebody is entering the password, another person cannot see the password he or she is entering. Now you need to rename the form one and the form two as login and savings account. Then that is for the form one. And the form two, we are supposed to design a simple calculator, which has captions like monthly deposit, yearly interest, number of months, right, and final balance. Then it should have a button which, when you click on calculate, you should be able to calculate the inputs you are going to enter. Now, your text boxes are supposed to be named like this text deposits, text interest, text months, text flex, text final. Then your button should be named as CMD calculate, and the text or the caption aspects of the button should be named like this. Then you are supposed to enter the source code into the command button, but you first have to declare, you have to declare the variables, deposit, interest, month, uh, final, uh, VAT, and interest. So deposit, the variables, deposit, uh, interest, month, final, they will be declared as integers, then VAT will be declared as decimal, and interest will be declared as single. Now this declaration is made outside the private sub. It is made outside the private sub. Another another form or another explanation is that this 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 declaration is made in the global variable, not in the local variable. Okay, so then you type this code, you type this code into the private sub or the local variable of the button calculate. Then after that, you go ahead and create a, a form two design, create a, a form two a, a form three. And the form three should be a web interface of any business you are running or any organization. Make it uh, make it user friendly. Let the let the feature be user friendly. Then your form four, you should create a form four which will display a message. Congratulations, dear programmer. It should, it should display this message. It should display this message. So at the end of the day, you, should, you are supposed to take screen prints, screenshots and paste it into the question paper. Then you are supposed to create a setup for the project. You are going to go through all the things so that you know how to do it. So now, 
opinion of visual basics opinion of visual basics uh, and make sure that the project name make sure that your project name is your id number so my project my id number is 1040-8488 make sure that the project name is your id number uh, make sure that the project name is your id number then navigate to your desktop so before that you can first create uh, a folder on your desktop and name it your id number create a folder on your desktop and name it your id number and now as you are navigating to your next folder on your desktop select the folder then click on select folder so that whatever you do will be saved into your folder which has been saved on your desktop okay then click on create so when you click on create your your environment will come your visual basics environment will come okay your visual basics environment will come your visual basics environment will come Visual Basics environment will come. Okay, so by default, this is how it looks like. So now we are going to create form one. Form one is supposed to have uh, the login system. Okay, so we need two labels, two text boxes. Uh, no, you can have three labels three labels, two text boxes, then at least two command buttons. So we'll be using three buttons, okay? So now you go to your toolbox, then you look for, you can decide to bring the buttons first, you can decide to bring the text box, you can decide to bring the labels. So let's say I bring my buttons first, okay? So I click on my button, I come to the playground, my cursor will change, click any part, then the button one will come. If I want to duplicate my button one, I right click it, I see copy, I right click any part again, I see paste. I right click any part again, I see paste. So now I have three buttons. Button one, button, then you arrange it in the form you want it to be. Okay. Now you go back to your toolbox, you go and pick up your label or your text box, anyone you want to bring. So I want to bring my label, I click on it. I come to the playground, I click any part, label one comes. So maybe I'll put label one here. I right click on label one, I go to copy. I right click any part, I say paste. So label two comes, I put it here. I right click any part, I say paste. Label three comes, I put it here. Okay, then I go back to my toolbox, I go and bring my text box. I search for text box, this is text box, I click on it. I come to the playground, I click any part. I have my first text box. I right click the text box. I go to copy, right click again. I go to paste. I get my second text box. So at least I need two text boxes. I need three labels. I need three buttons. My first label, I'll call it, I'll click on the label and change the text or the caption from label one. They won't change the caption. When you click on it, you click on it once. They come to the Windows properties. This is the Windows properties look for text then you change the text to let's say login login system login system change the text to login system and i change this text the label two text i change it to username then i click on label three i change the text of label 3 to password so i have changed the names of the, the text of the labels then i go to the text of the button the first button i change the text to uh login then i change the text of the second button to clear and i change the text of the third button to uh, 
Okay, so now the question says we should say we should change the name, the text or the caption of the form from form one to login. So you click any part of the form so that it will be selected. Then you come to the text, you change it from form one to login. From form one to login. So the text of the form one has been changed. I hope you can see. Then now we want to beautify our login form. We want to beautify or style it or customize it. So maybe you want to bold in the, the the font of the labels. Okay, so you can select the first label, go to font. When you see font at the Windows property, click inside here. Some thread red dot to come. Click inside, then choose the font you want. I want to maintain the same font. So by you, you can choose any font. And I want to bold in it. I want to make it twelve size then i click on okay so it will change then i click on the second label i do the same thing to it i go to font click on the three dots uh, i want to maintain it so i click on bold i go to 12 and i say okay now i want to change this this font i click on it i go to font click on the three dots uh, i bold in it i say okay i want 14. So then you can click on it and shift it so that at least it comes in the middle. Now, this is my, uh, I have changed the font. Now you want, in case you want to add a back color, a back color. So then you select the form, you go to the windows property, you look for back color. You look for back color. You see back color, click on it, click on the drop down over here. There's a drop down, click on the drop down go to custom then choose the color you want so let's say i want this color when i choose the color it comes over there in case you don't want a back color and you want a picture rather than the back color you click on the drop down then you go to system and you say okay i don't want any back color i want an image so you go back to your windows property again you see background image click on it click on the three dot dot Click on local resource, click on import, then you locate where your pictures are. So maybe if this is where my pictures are, I locate it, I click on my picture, then I say open. And I then it comes here. It comes here, then I say okay. So when I say okay, it comes for me. In case I don't want this picture, I want a different picture. So you can just come to the background image again, click on it, go to import, then you can change your picture. So in case you want to change your picture, in case you want to change your picture, um, okay, so let's say, Add some pictures here. So you can click on this one and click on OK. So then it changes your picture for you. In case you don't want to use picture and you want to you you don't want to use picture, you just click on the three three dots again, then you click on clear, then the picture will go away. In case you want to use background picture, background color, you just go to background color again, custom, and I use this color. Yes. So that is how we customize our form. Okay, you can add so many things to it. So now let's do the coding aspect. Let's go the login aspect. So double click on the login button. When you double click on the login button, wherever the case will blink. Now I told you, yeah, so wherever the case will blink, you go back to your question. You need to type this thing over there. You need to type this code inside wherever the login is blinking type this code there okay so i already have the code here so i'm going to type this code over there i'm going to type this code over there so i have copied it because i want it to be fast so but you should be typing so i type the code there so let's say uh, i type the code there So I type the code there, wherever you see username, you put your own username there, wherever you see password, 
you put your own password there. So don't use the same thing as I'm using. Use a different thing. Use your own username, your own password. Don't use what I'm using. Use your own username, use your own password. Don't use what I'm using. Use your own username, use your own password. Use your own username, use your own password. Now, you realize that form 2 has been underlined. Form 2 does show has been underlined. It means that we don't have anything like form 2 right now. So we need to create a form 2. So in order for you to create a new form, you go to project over here. You can see project at the top here. Click on project and click on project. Click on add windows form. Click on add windows form. When you click on add windows form, click on add. Then the form 2 will come. So now form 2 has come. Go back to your coding view by clicking on this button. When you click on this button, you go back to your coding view. Now you realize that form 2 has, which was underlined first, now it has not been underlined again. Okay. So now we go back to our design view of form 1. We are done with coding the login. We'll double click on the clear button. Clear button means that we should clear the text boxes. So that one to type this code over there type this code over there i know you can't see so let me introduce the notepad let me introduce the notepad so that you can use the notepad to view so when you double click when you double click the clear button wherever the cursor is blinking type this thing over there and you double click the clear button wherever the cursor is blinking type this thing over there so my cursor is blinking over here so i'll type it because i have copied it i'll just paste by you type don't you copy and paste type now you go back to your close button double click your close button wherever the cursor is blinking kindly type me dot close me dot close kindly type me dot close so we are done with form one we are done with form one almost done with form one now you remember the question says that the password uh make sure the make sure you change the unit system password character from false to true so now let's go and do that you click on the text box which will contain the password Click on the text box, switch to the password. Look for use system password character. Look for use system password car. Click on wherever the forces and change it to true. Click on wherever the forces and change it to true. Now go to where the down look for something called uh, password character. Look for password character. This is it. Use for password character and enter any symbol over there enter any symbol so i'm entering the asterisk symbol there i'm entering the asterisk symbol there okay so now we are good to go when you are done with this click on the save all button at the top here click on the save all button at the top here click on the save all button so that your work will be saved so as your work is saved into your folder which was created on the desktop you click on start we want to debug it and see whether what we have done is working click on start when you click on start it will compile then it will run so now uh you need to test the system so wrong username wrong password to tell you sorry both username and both password are wrong now Correct password nine nine six nine four. Correct password. It should tell you. Okay, so it should tell you. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, wrong username. So now let's close and let's see. What message did we give to our system? So when you enter a wrong password. You should say that uh, a wrong password. You should say that sorry, wrong username entered.
So you should make sure that everything is correct. Then you go back again and you test your system. So now let's test our system and let's see whether our second form will come. Let's enter the correct username and the correct password and see whether the second form will come. Nine nine six nine four. It means my password is wrong. Which password did I enter? Nine nine six nine four. Nine nine six nine four. So let's see, let's try again. Uh, my number look correct. Nine nine six nine four. So there's something wrong with my system. So you go back and go and check why is it not coming. Text box one is got to this. Text box two is got to this. Uh, so why is it not coming? So you go back to your question, you look at the code again. Let's copy it again. Let's go back to our VB. Let's put it there back again. Paste. So if text box one, if text box one dot text and text box two textbox two dot text textbox two dot text so username let's say let me use the manual e m m a we use e m m a and password let me say one two three four one two three four okay me this message okay if text box one is not equal to imano and text box two is not equal to one two three four then give me a message sorry username and password are wrong so if text box so if text box one else if text box one but text is not equal to iman ima not equal to ima and text box two is equal to one, two, three, four. Then team give a message, sorry, wrong username entered. Else if text box one is equal to Ima E M M A and text box two is not equal to password which is one two three four. Give a message, sorry, wrong password entered. Okay, now save this one save it then now debug it again and let's see debug it again so e m m a at the same one two three four okay so now the form two has opened so it's working okay form two has opened so it's working so now let's close this so we are done with our form one we are done with our form one so we go to our form two uh, from two wants us to bring five labels, five text boxes. Uh, you can bring four command buttons. So let me bring four buttons first. Click, I click here, I right click, I copy, right click, paste, right click, paste, right click, paste. So you can arrange it anyhow you want it. So I want to arrange it like this. I want to arrange it like this. Then I go and bring out my five labels so i'll bring six labels so the first label i do copy paste second label second label i put it somewhere here my third label i bring it somewhere here my fourth label i bring it somewhere here my fifth label i bring it somewhere here 
my sys label i bring it somewhere here then i go and bring my text boxes my text boxes i bring my text boxes my first text box i bring it here my second text so i do copy and i do paste my second text box i bring my third text box i bring my fourth text box then i bring my fifth text box now the question says that the question says that your first label name it monthly deposit so i copy it i come to my vb click on my first label i come to text then i type monthly deposit then i go to my second label my second label is called, it's supposed to go as yearly interest i just want to use 30 minutes to do this work so that it won't be long for you to watch the video so my second label is yearly interest my third label is um my third label we go and check number of months you can be pausing the video and doing it as you watch so my third label is number of months my fifth label supposed to be what my fifth label is supposed to be what my fifth label is supposed to be what my seat label is supposed to be final balance my seat label is supposed to be final balance my seat label is supposed to be final balance so i'm done with my labels i'm done with naming of my labels then i come to my text boxes i need to name my text boxes the first text box you need to name it text deposit you can name it anything if you are not doing the work as instructed by the instructor but if you are doing the work as instructed by a text uh, instructor name the text boxes like this your first text box you click on the text box you look for the text or the caption no you look for the name rather the text boxes you look for name the text boxes you look for name not text you look for name so you change the name from text box one to you type this then text deposit text box two is supposed to be text interest text box 2 is supposed to be text interest text box 2 is supposed to be text interest text box 3 is supposed to be text month text box 3 is supposed to be text month text box 3 is supposed to be text month text box 4 supposed to be text what text box 4 is supposed to be text what text box 4 is supposed to be text what text box 5 supposed to be final text final text box 5 supposed to be text final we are done with the text boxes now the command buttons the, the button compulsory by force you have to have one button which is called the calculate button now with the calculate button the name should be cmd calculate cmd calculate that is the name so when you click on the button you go to the name where the written name let it be cmd calculate cmd calculate then the text or the caption should be the end symbol then calculate the end symbol and calculate so you scroll to the text you scroll to the text you scroll to the text then you change it from button one to change it from button one to the end symbol this thing so now you change the text of button two button two you can call it uh clear i call button two clear i call button two clear then you can call button three. You can call button three plus. Then you can call button four next. You can call button four next. 
so that it opens uh, form three for you. Now we need to bring uh, the name into the name of the the thing you are doing. So the text, the label one, change the text to let's say savings account. The baby Susu Susu Abba Susu Abba savings account. Savings account. That is my company's name. <laughs> so now, in the first thing, you need to change the caption of the form two. So click anywhere of the form two, go to the text or the caption, and the name is supposed to be savings account. So once you are done with that, you can decide to format the text. So you know how to format the text. Mm -hmm. Click on the label, go to uh, font. If you want it to be bold, you click on bold. I taught you go to 12 and it becomes bold. Okay. You can decide to uh, do all at once. So if you want to do all at once, you select one, then you hold on control. You hold on your keyboard control, C, T, R, L. Hold on it, then select the rest of the labels which you want to modify. Then you go to font, you go to font, then you select the font you want, the font style, then the size, then you say, okay. So all of them will, will be modified for you. Yes. Then you can decide to bring a back color. So you select any place, you select any place, go to back color on your property windows. Then you select the color you want, the back color you want. So let's say I want this. So I have this. I have this. Now let's do the coding experts. Double click on your command button. Double click on the calculate command button. Now, once you double click on the calculate command button, Send your cursor to this last last end where you see from two. Send your cursor, your mouse cursor there. Click on that so that there will be a space in between the public class from two and the private sub command button CMT command. Now go to your question. Go to your question and you can copy this one or you can do a cut and paste. So me, I already have the quest the this thing. I already have it so i'll just copy and paste so you have to type you have to type you have to declare the variables so deem deposit as iterate deem interest as iterate deem months as deem deposit as inter, uh, integer deem interest as integer deem months as integer deem final as integer deem fact as decimal and deem iterate as single you declare it in the global variable. So the global variable is outside the private sub, and the local variable is within the private sub. So now we need to type this code. You need to type this code inside the private sub, inside the private sub. So now I have the code over here. So I just do a copy and paste. I just do a copy and paste. You are supposed to type because I want it to be fast. That is why I'm doing a copy and paste. So I do a copy and paste. I have my code there. I go back to my form two. I click on my clear button. Wherever my cursor is blinking, I decide to type this thing over there. So you to type this thing in the clear button. That is type text deposit dot clear, text interest dot clear, like how you see it, text month dot clear text vat dot clear text final dot clear type it like how you see it then you go back to your form two double click on the close button then type me dot close type me dot close then you go back to your form two again click uh, click on the next button then type uh form three dot show form three dot show Type from three to show. Now you realize that uh, because from three is not there, it has been underlined. So you go to your project, click on new form, new Windows form. From three will come. Click on add. Immediately you do that. That thing that was underlined will be gone. The thing that was underlined it will be gone. So now 
we are done with our form two. We are done with our form two. You can save all, then you go ahead and design form three. The question says that your form three should be, you should have a knowledge in human computer interface, whereby human computer interface means that your interface should be simple. Your interface should be simple and it should be user friendly. So you need to, your lecturer wants you to design something like a website, it should be user friendly. Okay, it should be user friendly. So now I'm not going to really, really design a website. Okay, just something a website interface. Okay, and uh, he wants you to add a, a button. Now you should add, you should have two buttons. You should have a button on the form two that will lead to form three. Likewise, a button on form three that will lead to form four. Okay, so uh, on the form three. We are supposed to have a command button and supposed to have a button and when we click on that button it's supposed to take us to our this thing it's supposed to take us to our form it's supposed to take us to our form 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 so you can name this button as next button you can name this button as next button so this next button, when we click on it, it should take us to form four and e xt. So now let's double click on this button. Then let's type uh, form four dot show. Form four dot show. Form four dot show. So now form four has been uh, underlined. So you just go to projects and bring from four so click on add windows form make sure that you can see from four dot vb over here then click on add click on add okay now let's go back and work on our form three it wants you to have uh, a user interface it should be a nice user interface so you can use lab you can use just labels and picture boxes okay so now uh, I want to design uh, something nice, so uh, I just bring uh, a label. Let me first use a label first. Let me bring a label. So I bring my first label. So my first label will be here. Then I say maybe uh, which is online shop. Which is online shop. If I say uh, which is online shop. Okay. I say which is online shop. So when I say which is online shop, then I can decide to bring another label. Okay, I bring another label. Then I put I, I bring the label here. So I bring another label again. I bring another label again. I can bring another label again. You know, we are designing the website. Okay. So now this first label, I'll call it uh I'll call it maybe the home button uh the home the home button and this one i can call it uh uh let's say account you name it anyhow you want it no buttons they, they are just something just to design this thing accounts then maybe i name this one about us about us about us okay I name this one about us so i can pull it like this if you think the interval is too wide then maybe you can bring it here you can bring it here you can bring it here then maybe you want to bring a time so you go to your toolbox and going for time going for date and time picker date time picker so click on it then come and put it here so you get your if you want time you, when you when you select this you come to your windows property and you look for you look for you look for you look for uh, you look for format and look for format then you specify the format you want only time or you want a short you want only the date and the date should be short if you want only the date the date will be short for you if you want time to you can bring it and you specify time 
So let's say I want the I want the date to show. So the date to show right there for me. Then let's say I want to bring some things I'm selling. So so you, I'll go and bring a picture box. And I bring a picture box. So I can put a logo over here. So I can put this picture box here. Then I copy and bring another picture box again. Okay. So that maybe this is where I'll be displaying the things I'm selling. Another picture box to display the things I'm selling. Another picture box to display the things I'm selling. So it depends on how you want to customize it. Don't do it exactly like how I'm doing it. Whatever you want to do, you do it, you customize it in your own way. Don't do it exactly as I'm doing it. This is where you become creative. Be creative in the form three. Be creative and uh, come out with your own, uh, this thing, your own steps, okay? Be creative and come out with your own be creative and come out with your own stuff. So I am just doing something, showing you how the form three needs to be done. You have to be creative and come out with your own uh, stuff. Okay, be creative, come out with your own stuff. Be creative and come out with your own things. Be creative and come out with your own things. I'm just creating something. So that at least you know what you are supposed to do. I'm creating something so that you know what you are supposed to do. I'm creating something so that you know what you are supposed to do. So you have to be creative in your work. Be creative in your work. Be creative in your work. I'm just creating some to be creative. So you can also bring a background image at the phone. Select any part of the form. Go and look for background. Or if you don't want background image, I want back color. Look for back color. Back color. Then you, have, you bring a back color. In case you don't want back color, and you want background image too, you can bring a background image. So whatever you want, you bring it. Whatever you want, you bring it. Okay, then you can decide to change the fonts of the the label you know how to change fonts okay so we are done with the form three we are done with the form three we are done with the form three so now we go to the form four the form four he wants you to display a message okay he wants you to display a message so you can decide to bring a label you can decide to just bring a label okay you go to your toolbox you can decide to bring a panel and the label so you go to toolbox Make a panel. Bring a panel as big as you want it. Bring a panel. Bigger you as this as big as you want it. Then you bring a label. Bring a panel and bring a label. Then uh, you can decide to bring another label outside so that you 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 type something. And decide to bring a label outside. And decide to bring a label outside then you bring a button which will be maybe exit you bring a button and you can call the button exit you bring a button you bring a button and you call the button exit and bring a button and call the button exit e x i t okay now, when you double click the button, you can type application, application.exit so that it will exit the whole application. Now, this label one, that is where we are going to have the message, okay? So now you go to the first thing, you can decide to copy the message it wants to display. Then you go to your work. As you have selected the label, go to the text. When you click inside, you see this uh, drop down menu. Click on the drop down. Uh, then you put, you paste, you paste the message there. Now it will be long, so you can break it. So when you see a full stop, put your cursor there, click on enter so that it comes on the next line. Full stop, click on enter, comes on the next line. 
full stop, click on enter, comes on the next line. So you can decide to let it be like this and see how it appears in your listing. Okay, if it appears like this and you're okay, fine. If you want to change the font, so you go to font as it is selected, go to font and change it. If you want to make it bold, you can make it bold. If you want to make it any how you want it, you can make it any how you want it, you know? In case you want to bring a, a background color in the panel, select the panel, go to back color, go to back color, then you select the color. You can do it anything you want it. Yes, you can do it like this. Then this one, you can say, when you select this label, you can say Lectrex message. Okay. You can, or you can say message or Lectrex message. You can say, name it anything. Or you can decide not to bring it. It's not compulsion. Okay. Message. It's not compulsion. So you can decide to edit this font too. You can decide to bring a, a, back, a, a background color or a background picture at the form. Okay, now that you know how to do it. So at the end of the day, this is the whole work he wants you to do. From one, from two, from three, from four. So now let's test, let's save it and let's test it and let's see whether it works. Then after that, I teach you how to do the, the, the screenshots and I teach you how to do the setup and we are done for the day. So now when I enter a wrong username, wrong password, it should tell me sorry good password and username are wrong when i enter a correct password you tell me sorry wrong username entered am i getting the same messages okay i need to change my message listing so let's say e m m a okay so it opens the second one for me i calculate i calculate I calculate so that's what is one point one. And my final balance, I get my answer. If I click on clear, it will clear. If I click on next, I go to my next form. So this is my simple website. You know, you see the dates there, you see everything. Okay. When I click on next, it sends me to the uh, this thing, uh, my form four. Okay. When I click on exit, it closes everything. So it means my system is working, okay. Now let's go back and let's do this correction. Now make sure you don't do copy and paste. Make sure you type the thing into the system. When you type it into the system, it's going to work correctly. Okay. Now everything is working. So now you need to do the screenshots. Okay. You need to do the screen print because in the first thing he says add all your screen prints here at least 10 of them so you are going to get at most 16 screen prints that is you take a screen print of you take a screen print of the first form first from the design view then you take a screen print of the holding view then you go to the second form design view holding view third form design view holding view then the fourth form design view holding view Okay, then when you are done, you run the system. When you run the system, you take a, a screenshot of it. Then you enter a wrong username, a correct password. Then you take a screenshot. Then you enter a correct username, a wrong password. You take a screenshot. Then you enter a wrong username, a wrong password. Then you take a screenshot. Then when you enter the correct username, correct password, it will open the form two for you. Then you take another screenshot over there. Then you enter, you key in your values, your numbers. Then when you're able to calculate and the final filter comes to take another screenshot, then you click on next. Then it goes to your form three. You take a screenshot of your form three. Then you go to next. Then you take a screenshot of your form four. So in total, you're supposed to get like 16 screenshots on our screen. Yes, yeah, screenshots. So now, how do we paste the screenshots into our system? How do we paste the screenshots into our system? So you go to where your question is. So this is my question, my PDF. You right click it. When you right click it, then you say that open with. You right click it, then you go to open with. Then you go to choose another app. When you go to choose another app, you click on more apps. 
when you click on more apps then you locate word microsoft word click on microsoft word say open so it will open the work for you in microsoft word format to open the work for you in microsoft word format it will open the work for you in microsoft word format it will open the work for you in microsoft word format so when it opens it for you all you need to do is first fill in your information you are supposed to enter your name enter your student name your student id your campus and your level the course code and course title the lecturer's name the time and the date then you scroll down you scroll down now the question says that add at least two screens on one page add 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 two screens on one page okay so i just want to create uh, uh i just want to create a space over here so that we can add stand there and add okay now let's shift this one down let's shift this one down yes so now we can be adding our screen print here okay so now as you have done this you go back to your your vb make sure that your first form is showing go to you can decide to click on the start windows look for windows accessories look for windows accessories yeah look for windows accessories click on windows accessories look for snip, sniping tool look for sniping tool look for sniping tool click on sniping tool when you click on sniping tool this will come then click on new when you click on new there will be a whitish thing uh, covering your screen. It means that which parts do you want to cut? So I want to cut this part. So you put your cursor here, then you just cut. I want to cut this part. Then it comes like this. When it comes like this, you go to file, you go to save us. Then by default, it opens your picture where you can save pictures. Then you name it wherever you want to name it. So maybe capture one. Then you make sure that the save type is JPEG. Then you click on save. So you are done with your first screen. So when you are done with your first screenshot, you minimize it. Minimize it. Then you click on your VB, the coding view. Maximize the snipping tool. Click on new. The whitish thing will come again. Then you cut the code. You cut the code. Then you go to file, save us again, then you name it again. So maybe capture two. Then you click on save, you minimize, then you go to form two. You do the same thing, the same process again, the same process again, then you save it, you go to the, the coding view, do the same process again, sniping to uh, new, fighter still will come, you cut, file, save us. You save it. You can maybe repeat it to from three, coding view, design view. From four, coding view, design view. Then when you are done with both the, all the from one, from two, from three, from four, view and design view, then you run your system. When you run your system, then you take the wrong username, wrong password, when you click on login, when the message comes, you can drag the message to the down here, okay? Drag it to the down here. You open your sniping tool. Click on new. Write this thing will come. You click on the parts you want the lecturer to see. So you want the lecturer to see that you entered the wrong username and the wrong password. And this is the message you got. Then you go to file, save as. Then you save that one too. Okay. You save it. Then you minimize. Then you come back to your work, then you enter correct username, correct password. Whatever it comes, you take a screenshot. Uh, wrong username, correct password, you take a screenshot. 
correct password, wrong username, you take a screenshot. Then when you take your correct username, when you take your correct username, correct password, you click on login, it opens the second page for you. Then you take another screen print of the second page, then you save it. Then now you enter figures inside, enter figures inside, Enter figures inside, and when you get the answer, when you get the answer, you take another screen print again, screenshots. Then when you are done, you click on next. Then you take another screenshot over here. When you are done, you click on next. Take another screenshot over here. When you are done, then now you close your app. When you close your app, then you come to your Microsoft Word. Now you are come to paste the screenshot you have taken. You go to design. You go to insert, insert, you go to insert, you go to pictures, you go to this device, then it will open where your pictures are, then you navigate and locate where you save the picture. Navigate and go to the place where you save the picture. Navigate and go to the place where you save the picture. So I saved it here, capture one. Where you insert now you should make sure that two pictures go on the same page so you can uh, resize it by just dragging it like this so that this goes then you come here you click on enter then you go to insert again picture this pc then you take the second one the coding view so you see two of them are on the same page okay then you go to the next page then you go to insert picture this form two. You look for form two, then you insert. Then you go again, design, you, you go, you go again, insert, then you bring the form two coding view. Then go to next page. You bring form three design, form three coding view, form four design, form four coding view. Then now you the pictures you took when you were running the system, you also bring those ones too. Then you are done with your work, okay? You are done with uh, the screenshots. Then as you are done, you go to file, you go to save us, you locate where you want to save the document, you name it with your index number, you locate where you want it to be saved, then you can decide to save it in PDF format, decide to save it in PDF format, then you click on what? Save. Immediately you click on save, the whole document will be saved into what? PDF. The whole document will be saved into PDF. The whole document will be saved into PDF. Okay? The whole document with your images showing. With your images showing. So this is how you can get your document into PDF. Okay? Now, let's go and look at how we can do the setup that we are done for the day. Let's go and look at how you can do the setup. Now, with the setup, you just go to build. You save everything first. Save everything. Then you come here, build. You click on build. When you click on build, then you look for publish. You look for publish. Then you click on publish. When you click on publish, don't change anything. Just go straight and click on next. When you click on publish, click on next. When you click on next, you first Take the second option from a UNC path or file share. Select on it. When you select on it, you go to browse. You go to browse. When you click on browse, then a file system will come. Then you locate the name of your folder. So if your folder was on the desktop, you click on desktop. Then you locate where your folder was. So this is my folder. Then 48, 48, then I click on it. When I click on it, then I can click on what? Open. When I click on open, it will be selected over right here. Okay. Now, select the third one from a CD room or DVD. Okay. Select from a CD room or DVD. When you are done, then you click on what? Next. When you are done selecting from a CD room or a DVD, click on next. When you click on next, make sure that this has been selected already. Then click on next again. Then it will tell you that this application will be published to this location. That is your folder on your desktop. 
okay it will be said it will be published into your folder on your desktop so the setup will be saved into the folder on your desktop then you click on finish then you leave it don't touch it the system will build the system is building it's building the publication so now you get this screen telling you that your system this is your setup can you see the setup this is the setup this is the file the, the backup files which are needed for your system to run so it has been saved in my folder under a folder name called published so now you can close this one so now we are done with the work so when for you to know that you have successfully done the setup you are going to see a message like this on your output screen publishing file publish success uh, then the location will come then you tell you build one succeeded zero failed zero up to date zero skipped publish one succeeded zero failed zero skipped then it means that your public your publishing was successful so we are done with it now let's go and see whether it is true let's go and see whether it is true it has been saved so you close this folder you close this vb you go to the folder on your desktop this is it i double click it i open the folder now you see this folder called what publish you double click it you see the setup here this is the setup so you can decide to copy this publish folder put it on your pen drive then when you go to the department they tell you to install your setup you open your publish you open it then you see this one then just double click on the setup when you double click on the setup it will try to install it will try to install on your computer for you so it will install for you and you'll be able to do it you'll be able to run your system so that brings us to the end of our our practicals today if you have any question you can send me a message on youtube or if you have my personal number you can whatsapp me I'd be delighted to answer all your questions. Thank you very much.